Welcome back to the channel, everyone. And in today's video, I am going to be going over what are the best search to start off with if you are over the age of 40 going into offensive security with some experience in my opinion. And this is what I would do personally. I'm not telling you what to do or this is the end all be all way. But if I had to do it all over, uh, all over again at the age of 40 or over 40, which I currently now am, 42 years of age, this is what I would do going into offensive security and again with experience. Let's dive right in. Now, before I get into the main point of this video on which certs I'm going to take as of the age of 40, over 40, with experience or little to no, ex little to intermediate experience in networking, cybersecurity, and a Linux background or basic understanding of Linux, um, again, there are broad ranges in offensive security that you could go for, meaning it's going to be different if you're an internal FTE, say like at a tech industry, oil and gas company, PG&E, Edison, et cetera, or um, NRG you know, out here in Texas or the South. If you're a consultant or you know uh, some kind of pen tester consultant or cybersecurity consultant, whether that's on your own or somewhere at KPMG, PwC, Deloitte, et cetera. And then also if you got an overall understanding or consultancy or MSP, portion of that going in where you get those contracted to you uh, for pen testing. Um, now, again, there's also niche specific, meaning there's car hacking, there's IOT, there's embedded systems, there's NFC, RFID, physical, um, web app, API, uh, all kinds of different niches you could go into uh, offensive security. Now, the key thing why I bring that up is because you cannot learn everything especially at once. It is going to be hard, extremely taxing on you. Plus, you also got to learn different other elements of cybersecurity from the uh, incident response, threat hunting, EDR, um, some coding, scripting, um, you know, different uh, GRC, compliance, auditing. You got to learn a lot of other stuff and not only just learn it, but you got to keep up with it as these things change. Why I always bring up the trends and the, and the curves on how, you know, uh, these things are going to change really, really fast. And it just keeps on the, the speed of these things changing, keeps on increasing, um, keeps on getting faster and faster. And now also the big one, AI, um, deep machine learning. Um, so now, uh, you know, I wanted to bring that in because again, how I'm going to do it now and how I'm going to explain it, even though this is from my own personal doing, um, I'm just doing it as a broader scope. Uh, and I think for me, these are going to be the key bases uh, just because of where it's at right now and what I've went through this first half before Hacker Summer Camp and some of these um, interviews. And they range from tech industry um, all the way down to um, uh, one was AT&T. I said it already. I also left some of the questions that they did get the recruiter gave me, the internal recruiter gave me, um, you know, to study for uh, all the way down to um, power gas companies. Uh, some consulting, uh, and then, you know, again, mainly a lot of them were tech industry. So I'm going to dive right in to what I would do again, personally, these three are the top three that I would do just from going off of the interviews and how I would do it all over again, in my opinion. So let's, let me turn to the page and get to these certs. Now, again, these are the top three that I would go for. Number one is going to be Port Swigger. And I wish I would have done this a long time ago. Not only is it, uh, the training is free. All you have to do is pay for the certification. However, this right now is probably the best route to go, especially bang for your buck. But you are also going to get the training. Plus there is also um, good, um, good dudes and girls doing this on YouTube. So if you ever have issues, you could also go through there as well and follow through. Um, you know, similar to walkthroughs as well. There are a lot of these things, and I'm actually going through this myself. Uh, I started a couple of them, but I'm uh, like a dummy. I forgot that there is only, um, not all of them are required for the exam. I believe it's practitioner and some other one. I forgot what the other one was, but I believe it's only two, if I remember correctly. But again, why, why I'm choosing this one, again, for me right now, it's probably the best one overall training for web. It's free. 
All you got to do is pay for the exam. And it's going to be the tool most people use and are going to be required to use, Burp Suite, Burp Suite Pro. Now, you don't need Pro to do even bug bounty for the most part. It's going to probably take longer for certain things or certain items. But you really don't need Pro. However, you, you will get and acquire Pro on your own if you are in a consultant or doing business on your own, or you know, you're know you in a uh, FTE or in a consultant at a third party company like Deloitte, KPMG, they will give you the license and you're gonna be, uh, be able to access all the tools or uh, you know some of the stuff that it offers and then also some of the credits. I think you start off with 10,000 credits for some of the AI um, tools as well or uh, AI offerings that they have. I forgot what the actual term it's called, but uh, that's what I would do first as far as the web one. Uh, and again, the key thing why I'm doing web is because 65% of your engagements are going to be web and or API related. Um, that's whether you're internal or external. Um, so right off the bat, that is number one. And that is what was asked for on the interviews that I was doing. It's like six or seven of them from, uh, you know, the beginning of this year before hacker summer camp. Uh, and again, I, I touched on that video again, uh, earlier in the year. Uh, probably, I think it was like May or June, I put it out. Now, second, what I would do is again, CPTS. The training is to the T. I know most people are going to say OSCP. It has the um, recognition. I'm not a recognition mainstream person. I don't care about recognition. Uh, reason why, and some might say, well, you got that first. I was, I was told and CPTS was really, really new back then. Um, and you know, I went and I went for the CPTS third. I did the PMPT after the OSCP. But if I would have known, I would have done the CPTS first, especially when it came out. If I would have done my due diligence and research at the beginning. Um, now the training is really, really good. Uh, I think they missed some of the API portion on the training when I took it. I believe that is there now, and they did update it. This is pretty good, and it goes through a lot um, that. Offsec and OSCP don't cover. Remember, when I had to do OSCP, it was different. They didn't have the OSCP P+. The training was horrible. The videos were horrible. Um, the labs were horrible. The infrastructure was horrible. You pretty much had to go out and uh, buy additional training outside of the $1,600 that it was at the time. Now, I believe it's more than that. Um, however, the training was not you know, bang for your buck. It's not worth it. I don't care what recognition has. Now, again, the caveat is, is if a company is requiring that, no ands, ifs, or buts, then obviously you're going to have to go OSCP. It's similar to the government route where security plus and or CEH is required. There's no ands, ifs, or buts about it. You have to have those. Some companies do have that where OSCP is required. There's no ands, ifs, or buts. And unfortunately, you are going to have to get it. But if you don't, I would get CPTS. Now, if you ask, in my experience, people that... Uh, that are hiring managers in offensive security, cyber, or even other pen testers, red teamers, offensive security professionals, if they had to choose between one CPTS and OSCP, it would be CPTS, no questions asked. Now, the other question is, well, it's not proctored. Well, there's ways around that where there's a well, there's a way in offensive, in offensive security, offensive security certs, and I'm pretty sure you could get around that as well. Um, do some research. If you read Reddit and go through all those, there's people that say it can be done. Now, um, I'm not saying to do that, but what I'm saying is at the end of the day, if you have a, if you can answer the questions outside of the exam, uh, meaning world put, utilize what you learn in the exam and put them in uh, real world scenarios or answer those questions from what you learned. Um, you know, not just understanding the technical piece, but could also relay it back in a high level for the person that's interviewing you to get a good understanding. Like if you were going to say it back um, in an offensive security report uh, to an executive team, that is what is going to be key. I don't care what exam you have. You don't even need exams. I didn't have any exam when I broke into offensive security full time. Um, it wasn't a hybrid role. So it can be done. However, I would never recommend someone going non examless So, um, Jesus Christ, I got to mute the teams. I always forget to do that. So I would definitely recommend the CPTS because it's real thorough. The training is there. Um, there is no videos. Again, I'm a video person. I didn't need videos with this exam at all. 
Um, don't let the 10 days fool you because that will creep up, especially if you have family, everyday life happens, work, you got your side stuff going on, the gym, got to walk the dog every day. That 10 days will creep up on you plus the report. The report is very long and it is different from the other two exams, meaning OSCP and PMPT. They want it down to the T. Uh, and I did fail the exam because of the reporting the first time. So, um, that would be my suggestion. If I would do it, if I was doing this again, definitely CPTS would be number two. Number three would be CRTO. Why CRTO? Because it's going to not only give you the basic overview and understanding of what C2 is, command and control, but it's also going to be Cobalt Strike, where most organizations utilize Cobalt Strike, which is purchased in Fortra, and it's going to have their red team stack or red team pack meaning it's going to, uh, your licensing is going to be with, I think it's like, uh, normally it's going to be like around 35 K ish. If you know how to negotiate, you can get it down, especially long-term on a three-year deal. It's going to come out with a uh, cobalt strike core impact and also outflank outflank has their own C2, but it also utilizes, you could also utilize their own payloads and, and all that stuff. But now uh, you don't need to do that in the exam. I'm just giving you an overview on why I would pick this is because of the Cobalt Strike and most organizations use Cobalt Strike and you probably will have the co uh, co the core, the core, the Fortra uh, Red Team Pack or stack, whatever they want to call it or change it to. But back to the main point, this course is very, very great and they just updated it. I actually got to re-sign in and create my new password. Um, they redid it from when I took it and it's a lot better and it's actually more realistic uh, from what I was told. If you if you get caught or you trigger your the EDR that's in place, um, I believe it's only two or three times and, and the exam is done. It's actually a real world exam. So I actually think I want to take it again um, just to get that better real life experience and seeing the new updates as well. And then go on to the CRTO2. I think they changed that name as well. Um, but you also get lifetime access to the uh, course updates. Again, right here, no extra cost. Uh, 20 labs, uh, you gotta be, I gotta be by the labs, obviously. Um, and then one ex when you get your exam, it's two free attempts. Uh, oh no, actually it's, they changed it. Uh, take as many exam attempts as you need to pass. There is no financial penalty for failing. Oh, wow. That's even better. That wasn't there the last time. Uh, not that I needed it, but that is awesome. That is, oh shit. I definitely, I'm going to redo the training, <laughs> the new, the new updated one. So um, now it even has Marvel, Mar, blah, 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 Jesus Christ, Malware Essentials. I don't think this was in the last one. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot different now. Um, I definitely got to create this soon to redo, to get logged in and check out the new training material, some of the updates or a lot of the updates it looks like. So this is pretty much it. And again, I would really, this would be my third one. And again, like I said, it's an, an overall umbrella on the three key things you need nowadays. Uh, there was four cornerstones, whether you're a pen tester and or red team, no matter what, web, API, AD, and uh, the uh, core impact, or not, god damn it, not core impact, C2, command and control. Those four key cornerstones were what they were looking for in the interviews. And you pretty much had to be self-sufficient at all four, meaning an, at least a minimum of intermediate level, where not only you understand the technicalities of what you're actually doing, what the vulnerabilities are, what the exploits are, but also how to replay it back, not just in a technical level, but also at a high level as if you're reading the pen testing report back to an executive team. And that was part of the interviews for most of these companies that I did interview with. And again, these are the ones that are from range from the tech industry, oil and gas, some of the telecoms, uh, at and was one of them. There was another one. Um, they pretty much were all in line. And, and again, as far as the four cornerstones that I just said, those were all identical across the board. So, um, you know, going to, a uh, Deloitte or KPMG, that's probably going to be a little different. They might be a little bit more niche lenient, meaning they want someone mainly just for web API. If there's a free one or a freebie, something light, they might be able to jump on an AD or internal. Uh, they might need something just for physical pen tests. It might be a little different. Again, these are all FTE roles, meaning they're all full-time internal roles, not contractor roles. So, uh, and again, the, this is just an overall umbrella 
on what you need. Now, if there was a fourth one going in, I would do the cape. Uh, for in, in my opinion, I would do the cape just to get more of a in-depth, um, deep down knowledge of Active Directory. But that would be that. These three would be my my main exam certifications that I would do with some experience, uh, little to medium experience, and then also um, I would throw in the cape to get that. Uh, four corner cornerstone um, solidified, especially the Cape meaning AD. Um, really deep down dive into AD uh, knowledge base, and then from there on, depending on what company you go to, then you could pick your niche. Right, once you build th that, these four cornerstones for me is building your concrete foundation. After that, get into your niche specific. Whether you want to do projects on the side, I do NFC RFID on the side. And physical security, I do. However, that was my background, so that's second nature. That's like breathing to me. Um, but some, you know, you might be at Tesla, Rivian, etc., where now you're not only uh, you have your four cornerstone foundation built. However, car hacking is not only going to be your niche, but that might be your bread and butter on top of your cornerstone or added to your cornerstone because that's the bread and butter of that organization and those companies, right? Car hacking. So uh, you might have an IoT, um, IoT-based companies. Um, if you're FTE or, you know, whatever the case may be, there's a lot of different, uh, uh, there's med tech, uh, biohacking, um, payments, uh, ATMs, banking has ATMs, tap and go, NFC, RFID, um, blockchain, that's going to be another one, Ledger, uh, Ledger and Web3 technologies. So, you know, depend, build your four cornerstone foundation and then get into your niche. Uh, know it like you breathe, know it like it's the back of your hand. Um, not just from a technical level understanding, but also you can replay it back at a high level to your executives and then build on your niche. And again, you could try to learn everything. I can't, and I, I don't, will never, I, I don't know everything. Um, that is really hard to do. And again, you also got to take on the other cornerstones of cybersecurity, uh, especially being in offensive security. You're going to have to know compliance, auditing, um, you know, the whole GRC stack, uh, EDR, blue team, threat hunting, knowing how those things work and function. And if you're internal, you're probably going to be all hands on deck. So you're going to have to know one of these as a backup. Mine is a threat hunter. So, um, that's the video guys. Let me know if you agree or disagree. And again, this is what I would do all over at the age of 40 or older going into offensive security with little to intermediate knowledge of cybersecurity, networking, and or Linux. So that's the video, guys. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace out.